In this video we're going to look at enzymes and the factors that can affect them. Firstly we're going to take a look at what an enzyme actually is and what it does. They are biological catalysts and they're made from proteins. So these are chemicals inside an organism's body made out of proteins and they speed up chemical reactions. However, crucially, they don't get used up in that process. Therefore, they can be used again to speed up the reaction further. We're going to take a look at one specific example of where enzymes are really useful to us, and that is in the breaking down of food molecules. Our body, our cells, need glucose. It's a chemical that stores energy inside it, and we need it to release the energy, and the process of releasing it is called respiration. However, when we ingest food, it often contains something called starch, and starch is a polymer made of lots of glucose molecules joined together. Our body needs glucose, not starch, so it needs to separate this starch into the little molecules of glucose, and to do that, it uses an enzyme. And the enzyme allows our body to access those glucose molecules, so it takes the big molecule of starch, breaks it down into smaller pieces. If left on its own, this process would happen very slowly inside our body, but the enzyme is there to help speed this process up so we can get access to that glucose that we need for respiration. So let's take a closer look at what this enzyme actually looks like. So it's a protein and it speeds up chemical reactions. There's two main parts to the enzyme and this process. The first thing we need to know about is this active site and this is a specific shape and it's the same shape as the substrate molecule. So this substrate molecule is the thing the enzyme is trying to break down. In the example we had earlier that would be the starch molecule and that's the same shape as the active site of the enzyme. And the reason for that is so that the substrate can fit into the active site of the enzyme. If you have a different substrate this enzyme wouldn't be able to break it down because it would be the wrong shape. OK, so let's think about how this process actually works. We've got our enzyme with its active site, and we have a substrate molecule. And we're trying to break down that substrate molecule. So the first thing that happens is the substrate approaches the enzyme, and then it enters the active site. You'll notice that it's the same shape as the active site, so it fits in nice and neatly. That's called the lock and key principle. The reaction then occurs inside the enzyme, the enzyme helps to speed up that process and the products can then leave the active site. The last thing that then happens is the enzyme can break down another substrate molecule. Notice the enzyme is exactly the same, it's not been changed in any way, therefore it can go on to complete more chemical reactions inside the body. We're now going to think about what happens to maybe change the way that the enzyme works and one of those things that can change the way the enzyme works is temperature and if temperature gets too high. So here we have an enzyme and I'm about to turn up the temperature and notice what happens to the shape of the active site. Because the temperature is increased the active site has been changed. It's no longer the right shape to fit my substrate. Therefore the enzyme is not going to work. This process is permanent. That's really important. They like to use that word in the exam. Therefore, this enzyme cannot be changed back to normal. This enzyme will not work ever again. This process is called denaturing. So this word is really important. It's also important to note that enzymes are not living things. They're not alive. Quite often people will say the enzyme's been killed by the high temperatures. That's not the case because they're not alive. They're just chemical proteins. Therefore, they're denatured, not killed. So we're now going to have a look at some graphs that show factors that affect enzyme activity. And the first one we're looking at is temperature. So on the bottom of this graph we have temperature, then the amount of enzyme activity. So as the temperature increases, there is going to be more collisions between the enzymes and the substrate. Those particles are moving faster, more collisions are going to occur. Therefore, the rate of reaction increases. We then reach an optimum temperature. This is the best temperature for the enzymes to work at. They might ask you to identify this temperature from a graph, and all you're doing is looking for the peak of the graph and what temperature that is. However, after this point, the enzymes become permanently denatured, or they begin to become permanently denatured as the temperature rises. So the active sites are being changed by the heat, and this process is permanent. So as the temperature continues to rise, eventually we get to a stage where there's no enzyme activity at all, they've all been denatured, no chemical reactions are going to be occurring. 
The second factor we're going to look at is pH, and this is a very similar idea to temperature. You have an optimum pH, so this is the best condition for the enzymes to work at, and each enzyme will have its own optimum pH. At lower pHs, the solution is more acidic, so pH 1, 2, 3, they're acidic pHs. That acidity is going to denature the enzyme, it's going to change the shape of the active site. Therefore, at these extreme pHs, it's not going to work very well. Similarly, as you increase the pH, it becomes more alkaline. Therefore, you're going to get permanent denaturing occurring again. The enzyme isn't going to work well. So we say at extremes of pH, high and low, the enzyme doesn't work very well because it's been denatured. However, in the middle, we have an optimum pH around pH 7. Some have a slightly lower, some have a slightly higher optimum pH. The next factor is enzyme concentration. So if you have more enzymes, if you increase the concentration of enzymes, the enzyme activity is going to rise. However, the graph isn't a straight line carrying on forever. It curves off, reaches an upper limit, because there's a, a limit how fast that reaction can go. If you keep increasing the concentration, eventually you'll reach this limit where the rate of reaction can't increase any further. And that's the same idea as substrate concentration. If you increase the amount of substrate, the enzymes are going to be working faster. However, eventually you'll reach a limit. The enzymes can't break down the substrate any faster. 